Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to the channel and for today's video guys obviously on my right I have a special guest for you so on the channel we have today Pan the organizer himself uh, in the shop in the studio welcome Pan thanks, thanks for having me appreciate super, it super nice to have you to have you on and thank you for your time and thank you for the opportunity so we're gonna have a detailing video together uh, that's gonna be posted on on our Pan's channel at some point so I'll I'll let you know the detail eventually. A very interesting topic, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. What's the nicest or coolest event uh, that you've been to or you've been part of uh, in your detailing uh, journey or career? There's a lot of them, but I think the one that stands out the most um, was an event we had in Chicago at the um, Car Supplies Warehouse event. And that was uh, a reunion of basically a bunch of content creators on in the detailing space on YouTube that we all get together in the same place but we were also able to meet our viewers in person so on one of the days in the afternoon there was a kind of open house and uh, people could just come in and we shook some hands and, and met with people face to face so that was really awesome so not only meeting people that we usually chat with either by facetime or through uh, dms or a lot of us content creators do collabs but at a distance but we had uh, the opportunity to do this in person so detailing sessions meet a lot of detailing brands as well and uh, meet the people in person so, so yeah, made, made car supplies friends. warehouse event yeah. okay so we made friends and all absolutely and, and of course we saw old friends and we made some new ones so uh, it was pretty awesome. amazing yeah, yeah. all right yep so second question um i know you you've uh, you went over this topic before but is there gonna be a pan the organizer product brand at some point here um maybe one day for now i still because my viewers know i've never been sold to one specific brand i like to test all the different products from all the different brands and kind of work back to my audience to help them make better purchasing decisions. So I started detailing when I was 16, so over 27 years now, I'm 43 um, at this point. And uh, I just enjoy it so much that I'm not sure I'm ready yet for my individual brand. Although with time, you establish relationships with a bunch of the chemists and the brands out there. So I do have the contacts, so I wanted to make sure that before I, I start my own brand, I want the things to be quality. I want them to be tried and true. I want them to be at different price points as well because I know a lot of people are budget conscious as well. For others, they just want the best of the best regardless of price. Mm -hmm. So I want to go into it slowly but surely if I ever do it. But um, so not for now, but one day, hopefully yes, we'll have a pan okay, organizer. Good. So we're looking forward to it. And maybe you'll be testing them. Please. All right, nice. <laughs> Okay, so do you still have dreams and uh, and things that you want to accomplish in detailing? I guess yes. So if you can give us an example, well, for sure, the detailing line itself, maybe one day, uh, that would be the next thing. Um, the other thing, I'm always thinking of the next the next step in the life. Let's say, where would I go with the channel? What are the uh, what is the next evolution? So I know some had hinted perhaps to a TV series. I would like detailing to become more mainstream. Um, more general public at least more accessible because what I want is people to get into the hobby to enjoy it to love what they're doing love taking care of their cars and I see more and more since I started in 2016 on YouTube I just saw the progression in the sheer amount of YouTube channels there are now on detailing the information that's out there all the new brands so I think it's prime time ready for um, some sort of TV show so that would be if there's any TV producers out there, that's one thing I really <laughs> like, whether it's in French, in English, in Greek, regardless of the language, I speak those three languages. So that would be a, a, a nice, cool evolution. There's a couple of things I can't talk about as well, because um, they're they're under wrap for now, very secretive, but uh, you'll eventually find out. If you watch the Pan the Organizer channel, you'll, you'll figure some things out in the years to come for sure. Wow, that's all I can say for now. Innovation for the detailing community. Yes, right? always. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite channel, YouTube channel, to watch other than Detailing Dogma? <laughs> <laughs> of course, he's one of the channels I watch. Um, are you talking specifically to Detailing or any YouTube channel? Uh, any YouTube Detailing channel. Any any channel or it can be a Detailing channel as well. Detailing or so, not. Because I don't, so, I don't so want to put anyone under fire because there's I follow probably 20 to 30 okay. different channels so if, in Detailing. So if you have a Detailing channel, there's Maybe. too many good ones. I can't, too many? I, okay. yeah, I can't just pick one. There's a lot of guys doing great stuff out there. Um, and, I, and I don't want to miss any names. So there's a lot of great ones. I can, of course, shout out the closest to me that have been there for years that I know personally and that we've met in person. So, of course, Larry from Ammo NYC, uh, Matt from Obsessed Garage, uh, Rick from Rad Garage, Phil Miranda, Miranda Detailing, 
Uh, there's Jason from um, uh, Chicago Auto Pros and Car Supplies Warehouse. Um, who else? There's just so many out there. There's a lot of people I get along with so much. There's a Vermeil, so that's his. That's the way you pronounce his name. Some people think it's Vermeil. He's from um, Brussels, I think. Yeah, Belgium. From Belgium, yeah. And uh, so his name is Vermeil. He does great stuff. Uh, there's uh, th God. There's just too many, yeah. and I don't want to miss anybody. But John name. from Forensic, obviously Frank from Detailing Dogma. Um, there's a lot of newcomers as well that are doing great things. Eddie Cologne from EC Details, the DIY channel, of course, my friend Ivan McCroy and his partner Nick McGurk. They do some awesome stuff for the detailing community. There's, there's just more and more now that I'm so happy to have met in person that I do great stuff. I'm Josh V, right? Uh, Josh from California. Um, again, forgive me if I forgot anyone from the top of my head, but yeah. there, there's just so often. Awesome. Yeah. There's so many, yeah. Absolutely. Other than YouTube, uh, other than detailing, do you watch uh, religiously a couple of channels on yes. different topics? I like uh, electronics and uh, tech a lot. So Linus Tech Tips, Marquez Brownlee, those are my go-to tech okay, channels, yeah. I think. Marquez Brownlee. So, yeah, they keep me up to date, MKBHD as he's known. Um, there's a lot of uh, channels on cars as well. So uh, Car Wow is probably one of my favorite ones because of his drag oh, tests wow, yeah. that he does with, with different so supercars there. He is so funny. Yeah, Matt Watson has a great personality out there. So I watch uh, things on watches as well. So uh, I like watch collecting. I like sneaker collecting. I like uh, electronics, hi-fi, home theater. I, I'm just all over the place. Okay. I like cars as well. So yeah, I'm spread So you out. spend some time on oh, YouTube? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Other than, uh, yeah. Other than your own? A few hours a day. Uh, ho and not only to see what friends and uh, other channels are doing to stay up to date in the detailing world, but just for entertainment as well in, in other yeah. fields than detailing. I got to change my mind every now and then. Better than cable. I love you. Better. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. All right. So do you have uh, a number one fan or supporter, maybe other than your wife, uh, the, oh, and your brother. Do and you my have brother was my number one subscriber. He was the first subscriber. Ever, yeah, yeah. I, I knew it, uh, that was that was going to be the answer. But other yes. than that, is there someone, someone else? There, there are many, um, but I would have to say one that was there very early on. His name is uh, Stefan. He's from France, uh, and he followed me almost through, I think, yeah, the first day or the first week. Wow. And I met him in person at events in France. There was a detailing show called The Detailing Show uh, near Paris, so three hours from there in a city called Tours. I have a few videos on the channel that showed my experience there, but he was always there, very supportive. Uh, he was, I think, the one who won the first giveaway on my channel as well. It was a uh, pot of Soft 99 Fuso coat. So I still nice. remember that. And a t-shirt of Pan, the organizer. So uh, yeah, he's been there since the beginning. So eight years now following me and, and we still on? write to each other. We ate together in a restaurant. Oh, when wow. I visited uh, France with my girlfriend, we went to Paris and he was a few hours out in another town. I think it's called Lorraine. And so uh, we met in person nice guy. and we had a, yeah, a meal with a few of my subscribers that were there. So genuinely, yeah, very, very nice people. Yeah. Nice. So shout out to uh, Stéphane Trebosk. You still uh, comment on your on your videos from time to time? Yes, yeah, good, good. All, all the time. Yeah. Okay, so tell us how 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 is a typical day in uh, Pan Organizer's life? Ooh, it's always too busy. It's seven days a week. Um, I typically wake up at around noon, so I go to bed between three and four in the a.m. So um, in the morning, I'll either do some light workout, whether it's elliptical at the gym or a few weights uh, in the house. I'll take my shower. That's one of the first things I like to do to get the day ready. And uh, I don't have breakfast. I'm not a breakfast kind of guy. I don't know why, but th that's just the way I've been. And I go straight to work, whether it's uh, detailing, whether it's um, filming YouTube videos. So I, I, I'm a workaholic. My work days are typically 10, 12, 14 hours. I, I, I stop counting. So I'll, I'll do that. I'll edit. Uh, my girlfriend goes to bed really early. She wakes up at like 5 a.m. So she'll go to bed typically between 8 and 8.30 uh, in the afternoon. So I'll, in the evening, sorry. So I like to do uh, a lot of my editing then because it's very quiet in the house. And so it allows me to focus, have that creative kind of juice going. And I'll do a lot of that. And then typically one hour or two before I go to bed, that's when I'll catch up on some Netflix, either movies, TV shows, or on YouTube to see what's going on with my uh, favorite channels. Uh, during the day as well, I'll spend up to four hours replying to YouTube comments. So wow. uh, yeah, it's it's very rare in the bigger channels out there, but I still like to be very close to my audience. So I take the time personally every day. I don't have a team. I'm, I'm solo in everything I do. So I reply to comments, every single comment on YouTube, every single day. So I'll four hours. It does get overwhelming because obviously there's like thousands of comments coming, coming in. Uh, but I try my best to stay connected without my viewers. My channel wouldn't exist, so that's one way. I think to give back to the community is to be there, answer answer people's questions, and, and help them out in their detailing journey. Do you get recognized a lot <laughs> in public, going in public uh, places? Yeah, 
Oh yeah. Yeah, we went. Uh, well, we I think we visit, we went to see nine hockey games. I invited my brother. He's a hockey fanatic. I love hockey as well, but not as much as him. And we went to the Bell Center where the Montreal <laughs> Canadiens play. And it's it's uh, it's fun to meet people fun. in person. It is even like I go to Home Depot, just pick up a few stuff, and I'll ask. Let's say, uh, sorry, like where, in which row will I find this or this thing? And then the person just, are you? and the organizer so i always find that super funny shake hands take pictures it's if you ever see me in person don't be shy i know some people sometimes are shy come and say hi it's always a pleasure for me to meet you guys in person but uh yeah more and more now we go to restaurants for example or movies and things like that if my brother or my family or my my girlfriend they're kind of used to it now they're like oh here we go again so hopefully i'm not going to lose my brother or boyfriend for the next uh three hours so my girlfriend when she sees me she's like okay please remember that we have an event that we have to attend because i'm a chatterbox right so um, yeah, that's cool though. Maybe you one day. viewers in person, I think it, it materializes the fact that you're doing something in front of a camera and by myself in my garage, but there's actually human beings watching you and enjoying yeah. your content. And I'm, I'm really, really grateful for that. So it's yeah. cool. Maybe it, maybe someday we're, we're gonna have a Montreal event meet and greet. That would with, be amazing. I really want something in Canada. I'm hoping somebody um, organizes something big because we need place. So I'm thinking of a few product distributors out there that have big shops that can do it kind of like what car supplies did yeah in chicago with chicago auto pro so jason organized this crazy event so he had everybody under the same roof at the same time and then just an open house for viewers to come and meet us i think that was that would amazing great. yeah Abby, do you have a, another other rb i have too many hobbies like i said before <laughs> it's like i like watch collecting headphone collecting hi-fi home theater cars sneakers it, it's just never ending uh i have the sport card collection as well Currently, I would say, because for me it goes by waves, uh, the sport card collecting, really I got back into it. I remember how fun it was when I was a kid, but now I see it from an investment perspective. So I go to different car shows. I went uh, to card shows, sorry, a sport expo. So we went to the one in Quebec. I went to one in Toronto, which is the biggest in Canada, uh, 200,000 square feet, yeah. something like that. And now I'm going to one in Montreal tomorrow. Actually, we're filming this Thursday, so Friday. And um, so yeah, sport card collecting, I think would be good for a future investment. That's really what I'm into now. But I just like most of your hockey of, cards or hockey, but a bit of basketball and, uh, and okay. football as well. American so football. I didn't know that. I've yep. seen you, you have a recent video on the Toronto yes. show, Toronto exactly. hockey cards. Yeah, I have a pretty uh, pretty sick collection. Maybe I'll do a video one day if, if people want to see I that. I didn't know that the hockey cards were still uh, huge. that much around oh, nowadays. It's bigger than it has ever been. <laughs> I mean, there's cards that are worth millions of dollars out there. I, I see guys walking around with cases they might have 500 grand worth of, case, worth of cards in a little case, so you never know what to expect. And uh, yeah, it, it's very cool. All right, cool. Because when I was a kid, I was also collecting cards, but yeah. mostly opening packs. Opening packs, packs yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now we go after the hard to get rare cards. So patches, auto cards, uh, signed by the players, things like that. Uh, vintage cards, modern cards, whatever it is. It, it's is pretty awesome. Thing? Sorry? Uh, rookies, it is rookies. The, main, the most important thing. Okay. That's what you want to invest the most, so that's where you're going to have the most upside. Of course, that's where the most risk, you have a lot of reward, but you can also lose your life. Because if that new rookie you were believing in is a bust, well then your cards are typically worth nothing. So uh, it's diversifying your portfolio, so I like to have a lot of uh, goats that I call in every sport. So those are the blue chips, so the established players that are Hall of Famers or that have won a lot of cups or trophies. So you get the LeBron James, right? You get the Kobe Bryants, the Michael Jordans in basketball. Okay. In hockey, you'll get the Gretzkys, the Lemures, the Crosbys, the Oveshkins, the McDavids. But you the also bigger, got the, the young guys names. that are coming in. So maybe you'll want to invest into a Conor Bedar rookie or into Uri Slavkovsky or those kinds of things because you never know. For That's where you have the years. biggest potential of gains, right? Okay. So the, the blue chips, they'll have less of a progression in terms of years compared to the young guns. Well, you'll buy a card at 50 bucks and it could be worth a thousand bucks in a year or two they do well so that's big gains but uh, also it's a lot of stress because uh, you got to be very careful it's like investing in the stock market sometimes yes. you picked a good stock you did well and other times not so much right so if you didn't pick the right company or something happens with uh, macroeconomics or something happens around the world where the economy just goes bust well then your stocks are going to be affected yeah. it's super interesting though yeah yeah you have a video subject that you like to do but doesn't really attract people's attention or doesn't get as much views as it should. Like if our, I mean, I, what comes to mind would be like an interior video since we cannot get the best lighting. Sometimes it's hard to show the audience what we're doing. Do you have something that, that you like to do but it's hard to show or doesn't pay off really much in terms of views or attraction? I, in terms of views, I wouldn't say anymore because the channel has reached a point now where pretty much all videos do well. I think maybe earlier on when I started in 2016, 
it took time because I was a big proponent or one of the first ones to talk about or do tutorials on ceramic coatings. So I actually, I think I did the first true ceramic coating tutorial. That went viral later on at like 5 million views. Yeah. One of the biggest channel on, on videos on my channel. But initially people in 2016, it still wasn't a mass adoptive thing. Ceramics were a lot of people even today still think that ceramic coatings are a snake oil. Mm -hmm. We all know that's not true. Uh, but however, back then it was even more a thing. So I think it was hard to make people understand that there was an evolution uh, compared to traditional carnauba waxes and synthetic paint sealants. The next step above, which lasted years now, we had ceramic coatings. So it was to educate the public, but it was a fun thing, but initially it was tough. Thank God I stuck to my guns and I wanted to make sure to educate people on this brand new technology that did seem to have to be very promising. But back then it was multi-layered, very complicated, high spots and flashing times and you had to worry about a lot of things. And now it evolved to a point where even a child can apply a coating, single layer, one or two hours of curing, you're good to go. They perform well for years, great gloss, great slickness. So it's nice to see the evolution. Yeah. So I'd say probably that uh, making people understand that ceramic coatings were here to stay and fast forward to 2024. Now it's obvious every company out there has a ceramic based product it seems, right? Even the, the, the products that you'll have in big box stores, like your Walmarts, like your AutoZones, your O'Reilly's, your advanced auto parts, uh, your uh, Canadian tire here in Canada, everybody has ceramic based products on the shelves. So I think it's a, it became uh, mainstream. Yep. All right. Uh, do you prefer rinseless or soap for maintenance of your personal vehicle? Personally, I prefer the traditional wash method with soap. Um, if I have access, obviously in my garage, to the ionized water. I have the phone cannons, the pressure washer setup. So obviously I would use it because I'm not restricted in the water use. And uh, that's the thing I've been using for 27 years. I do understand those that have water restrictions, our condo dwellers, apartment dwellers, sometimes uh, you have water bans in some cities and municipalities more and more. In some countries as well, you cannot wash your car in your driveway. So uh, I understand the, the rinseless wash. If you use it correctly, it is a good alternative. And I know many of my viewers have that. But for me personally, soap is still number one in my books. Sure. Uh, next question, uh, how long does it take you to find the perfect parking spot when going to a, a big place, a big shopping mall or something like that? Uh, actually, I would say <laughs> I try to never bring my car. That's why we have my girlfriend's vehicle. I'm sure a lot of viewers can relate to that. So if, if we're going, let's say downtown Montreal, I never take my car out or I try not to, <laughs> or it has to be in like a private parking somewhere, but never in the street. Uh, like and a guaranteed if, dent if you go down exactly it seems like even though I, I go to public places sometimes like in a cinema and i'll go with my brother and i'll park my car all the way till the end right to be alone you come back from your movie it's inevitable you'll have cars parked left and right because they understood that you parked there uh, you might have a nice car or a clean car so like let me park right next to that guy right they had all the rest of the parking that they were able to select but no they had to go park next to your car so that stresses me a lot i try to not take my car to public environments so it is from my place uh, locally to different uh, spots but uh, even for big road trips we'll take my girlfriend's car we know that's the more family vehicle and it doesn't matter if that one gets dented or scratched or whatever it may be I try to keep mine uh, I'm a bit OCD there with, with cleanliness and even here remember when I came I asked Frank do you have a spot in your driveway because I don't want to park in the street I cannot do that <laughs> so he reassured me don't worry you'll be in the driveway I'm the same way yeah but I would go to Costco or somewhere at I you know it's going to be somewhat safer. Yeah, they have larger parking spaces yeah. in Costco's, yeah. But All even right. that, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> okay, okay, so you're a step above me. <laughs> what is the thing that you love the most in your garage, but not a product, more like a, a component or a part of a garage? It could be lighting or a garage floor. Uh, what is the, your favorite thing about your uh, garage studio? My garage cabinets, for sure. They're oh, made yeah? from Rousseau. Uh, one of the highest cabinet, uh, highest quality cabinet makers in the world, and they're right here from our province in Quebec. Mm -hmm. And it's actually my friend Matt Mormon from Obsessed Garage. As you guys know, if you follow him, he is obsessed with everything top notch quality. And we were together at the SEMA show in 2018 as we were walking around, and he was showing me different uh, garage uh, kind of um, cupboards and, and workstations and all that cabinet kind of stuff. I wasn't into that, right? So I just had, I think, before that, regular Black and Decker stuff, Black and Decker. which was still pretty fine, and they were okay. And so he told me, Pan, like, how do you not know this brand Rousseau metal? They're from your home province in Quebec, and they make like the best cabinets out there. And they're on the level with uh, his higher end, like uh, what was his brands that he likes the most? Uh, Sonic. Sonic, but the, the other one too that he installed now in his uh, new home. Of course, I'm trying to remember, but I can't. Uh, they're made in the USA, uh, Lisa. Uh, Lista, Lista cabinets and Sonic. So on this higher end, Rousseau is on that same level. 
and I was like, oh my God. So they made a crazy demo for us at SEMA. They were like, these drawers can help to support up to like 800 pounds. We're you like, come on. You, you stand up on it. I jumped in it. Yeah, I'm 235 pounds, six foot three. And I was just jumping in the drawer and it wouldn't flex, wouldn't bend. So I knew there was something special. So I had to order them, get them. And that's <laughs> probably my pride and joy. Like everybody, all my neighbors who drop by, as nice as their garages are, as soon as they see my garage or like their jaws drop, and I think the garage in general, I really thought it out for detailing specifically. I worked closely with my builder to make my dreams happen when we were building the home brand new. But um, yeah, the, the cabinets are my my number way, one thing in the garage. Yeah, yeah by the way, Pana has a video on it uh, where the company came to your place to install them, yes. right? Yes, yep, Russo Metal. So you can check all my garage tour videos. I talk about every little aspect of the, of the garage if you guys want to know how to set up your stuff for detailing. All right, in the similar family, what is your favorite detailing tool uh, at the moment or ever not a product not a spray product just your favorite tool such as an extractor or maybe a machine polisher pressure washer the the krenzler 1122 tst the best pressure washer i ever tested ever used ever owned it's it just sound? built like a tank no it's it's just you know it's german built it weighs a ton the pump is super heavy duty it's made for industrial use um, and it just lasts forever. I, I, I don't see it ever failing. And it's just, it's like, do you need a Ferrari? Do you need a Porsche in life? No, you don't. A Corolla or a, a regular Civic can bring you from point A to, pay, to point B. I understand that. But it's the experience driving from point A to point B in those more special cars. So it's not that I, I, I had a Karcher K5, like $150 pressure washer for 10 years. It was working fine. I can still do the job. A yeah. uh, $100 pressure washer can get the job done. It's not getting the job done or not. It's the experience. There's something about using that machine that makes the event of washing your car fear, feel more special. I don't know if it's me, am I crazy? Drop comments in the comment section. But there's some, some things, it might be something different for you guys, another tool yeah. in your garage. But for me, it has to be, I think, that, that pressure okay. washer. The 1122 is the one that you, you, you have to fold? Horizontally. Fold? Okay, you yeah. put down on the floor when you're using it because the pump has to be horizontal to the ground the way it works. So Matt is supposed to come with the, the same version but a smaller one? More he compact? already has that. He has the K1322. For the wall mounting or yeah. the mobile detailers so that already exists it's the same pump basically as the 1122 but in a more compact thing made to be made to be placed on the shelf so it's the same motor same tsd with a total stop system just a, a different version heavy, yeah. i heard it was pretty heavy, yeah. it super like 80 pounds yeah that? yeah it's it's, it's <laughs> built like a tank all right definitely there's no plastic parts there uh, what is your favorite part of the detailing process in general yeah in general is it like washing polishing or interior or scrubbing carpets uh, as cheesy as it may sound it's looking at the customer's reaction okay. when i over deliver because i like to under promise over deliver but i still go pretty crazy in the promises in the sense that when i have customers over i explain to them the process we have a big discussion of course according to their budget what their expectations are what they're looking for but i always say there's one thing especially if you think your car is brand new it will be better than you once I deliver the final results. And then when I say open the door, because I have a slight access door to the garage and I always do kind of a reveal, you'll see that in a few videos. Yeah. By the way, if you're curious to see some people's reaction, some customers allow me to film them, but to film them. So when they open the door and they step in and they just took delivery of their car like two days ago, right? Brand new from the showroom, <laughs> at least brand new, right? Because a, a car is never new until it's properly detailed for many different reasons. But when the person opens the door and they come in and their jaws just, and they're like freaking out, Oh my God, they touch with the backside of their hands, the paint, they can't believe it. They look at the finish, the mirror gloss, the, all that, and they get over enthused. And for everyone out there, if you're watching these videos, you probably love your car, right? So our cars are very important to us. So seeing that reaction that you were able to deliver their baby in a better than you appearance, and they're so over the top, over the moon happy with what you did, there's nothing better than that. Yeah. That for me, and if it's not for a customer, if I'm detailing a car for myself, let's say, or for a friend, it's gonna be the end result is always feeling that slickness and the work that you accomplish, it's always the end result for me. So it's always getting the journey, getting to the point and looking at the final yeah. result. That's the biggest satisfaction yes. afterwards. Absolutely. Okay, Pam, so a uh, couple of topics. I wanna know your takes on uh, four different topics. The first one is what is your take on, the, on PPF in general for your car? So kind of like, is it overrated or underrated or what's your opinion kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. Um, PPF, some viewers ask me, why are, are your cars not covered in PPF? For many reasons. First of all, personally, again, I understand those who need PPF, but for me, I don't like the look. I don't like the feel of PPF. I prefer bare paint, 
with a good protection on it, like a ceramic coating. Also, um, I only keep my cars three years. I always get a brand new car and I do low mileage, like yearly, maybe I do six to 7,000 kilometers, which is what, not even 5,000 miles or 4,000 miles. Yeah. So I don't do much mileage. And so um, the uh, rock chips, stone chips and scratch protection are of no concern to me. So um, I'd rather not have PPF and just do proper decon paint correction and apply a high quality professional grade ceramic coating because I like the gloss, I like the slickness, I like the ease of maintenance, the self-cleaning properties, the UV protection, all that stuff without having to worry about uh, PPF because some, yes, even though they've gotten a lot better, but some still oxidize or yellow, depending on who your installer are. Some can peel from the corners, dirt yeah. gets lodged behind it. I've seen nightmare stories. So it's, it's just not for me. However, for a person who asks me, I want the ultimate in stone chip and scratch protection. PPF is your only solution. People think that ceramic coatings magically yeah. protect against scratches, swirls, so. and stone chips. No, that's not what they're made for. That's poor marketing by some of the cheaper coating brands out there if they say that but only PPF can achieve that. So for the best of worlds, if you need PPF is apply PPF and apply a good PPF coating on top, a ceramic coating on top of your PPF to make it easier to clean, more uh, more enjoyable for your maintenance. But uh, yeah, just PPF is not made for me, but I understand those who, who need it. Yeah, I think the worst about it is the dirt accumulation in the, the seams, edges and yeah. depending on what kind of install you've got, yeah. it can look pretty bad on a white car yeah. real fast. Yes, if you're getting PPF, pay extra, go see a very reputable installer, you will not regret it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what is your take, overrated or underrated, on wheel cleaners? Versus, let's say, using just regular soap, for example, to clean your wheels? Yeah, versus uh, using regular soaps, and it can be an iron remover, wheel cleaner, or uh, just a simple a high pH one. For me, dedicated wheel cleaners are important, because although some people will make the argument that I could just use car soap to clean my wheels, so will it clean the dirt? Visually, yes. However, just like your paintwork with clear coat, your wheels are clear coated. So they need some form of decontamination over time, especially if you have steel rotors, all that brake dust that evacuates from your brakes and your pads, it sticks onto the clear coat of your paint, but also on your wheels as well. And if you're just using a pH neutral shampoo or even a higher pH shampoo, soap alone will not remove that embedded, that embedded brake dust. Uh, soap will also not fully remove tar deposits. So there's yeah. some contamination out there that needs something uh, more aggressive, like a tar remover, an iron remover, or a wheel cleaner, or a wheel cleaner with iron removers. We're seeing that more and more now. They built in the iron removing technology and the color change inside the wheel cleaners. Some people might argue as well that just an all-purpose cleaner will work. Yes, again, an all-purpose cleaner, the name says it, it can clean multiple surfaces, but you're the, master, you're the jack of all trades, master of none. So although visually the surface looks clean, I can guarantee you if you only use a soap or an all-purpose cleaner, come back six months later, try an iron remover, and you're going to see just all the bleeding you're going to get from all that embedded brake dust that those cleaners weren't able to remove. So yes, wheel cleaners, I think, have their place, especially if you get something that does both wheels and tires, because I yes. like that. So you're not having to have a separate tire cleaner and a separate wheel cleaner. And now things like Brake Buster, Adam's Wheel Cleaner. Uh, there's um, one from, um, what's the brand? The Labo Cosmetica, Maniac. Yeah, I mean, the Maniac fine. line wheel and tire cleaner. There's a lot of good ones out there. So you do both cleaning your wheels and your tires in one. And every now and then, if you need a boost to remove the brake dust, use an iron remover or a wheel cleaner with iron removing capabilities built in. But I definitely feel that wheel cleaners have their place in a detailer's that, arsenal. That could yes. depend on the car as well. Yep. But for, your, for yourself, washing it twice a week do you use like a oh no yeah if you're if you're washing it regularly then my wheels are ceramic coated then a ph neutral car shampoo will be enough for your regular washes but every now and then at least once a month try and use a dedicated wheel cleaner or uh, for example on my porsche 911 turbo s i had carbon ceramic brakes so those would not generate iron particles because there was no brake iron particles so iron removers wouldn't be needed on that car but now on my new porsche i have the regular porsche steel brakes the uh pccbs or the carbon brakes weren't available as an option as of yet on the new Cayenne. So um, I'll have to use brake dust, uh, brake uh, cleaners, sorry, iron removers to remove that embedded brake dust because again, that pH neutral soap will not be enough to remove all of that extra contamination. But yes, for regular weekly washes, you don't need to use the high pH wheel cleaners every single time. So maybe Good. there's a nuance there. So use common sense. Yes, there you go. Uh, overrated or underrated paint slickness. Uh, is it just a feel effect or you think there's more to it? People, I think, sometimes like to think that it's overrated or there's too much hype put into that. But personally, and I'm sure many of your viewers or my viewers can, can attest to that, is we like the feel. 
I love a slick paint. I don't care how good the protection is. If I'm touching the paint, because I don't know why I love to touch the paint, if I'm feeling it and it feels grabby or, or you're like rubbing on it and it doesn't feel nice, I don't enjoy it as much. There's so much satisfaction from running gently, right? The backside of your hand and feeling that slickness. And not always, but usually, a very slick product will also make for a more safer washing experience because yes. the slicker the surface the less abrasion there is from your microfiber wash mitt or when you're towel drying with your microfiber drying towel so if you have a slicker surface things are just going to glide a lot easier so you have less chances of marring so i think slickness for me is still underrated because i absolutely love it and uh, not only for the feel but for also the practical use yeah. less marring potentially do you i don't know do you agree yeah for me too there yes. you go so when you walk, when you go on your your wash mitt, it, it glides easier when yes. you dry it. Yep. And uh, as we've seen, the market is trying to catch up. Yep. Most products now, no, most precedent like we color are slick now. Yes, absolutely. So if you don't have slick yep. slickness, it's not probably and, not going to do And for well. that slick surface, even if you were to use like a leaf blower, like I do to blow dry your car, so no contact with a microfiber drying towel, the slicker the surface, the quicker all of that water evacuates yeah. off. So you're spending less time drying your car. So yeah, slickness is very important to me. Okay, my last point, overrated or underrated, a leather protection product, such as a ceramic coating for leather okay. or those cream the that, conditioner the conditioner that's all right, right. so <laughs> there there are nuances to bring because leather protection in general is very important but i think when we were younger the technology wasn't that hadn't evolved enough and i think we didn't know as much as we do today because now we have access to youtube channels and i like to interview a lot of the chemists that formulate these behind including leather experts so uh, ram a very good friend of mine at this point he's the owner of geist leather care uh, and the uh, company over at Colorlock in Germany, they're great and they're known for great work with uh, brands like Porsche, BMW, Audi for leather work and leather care. So in talking to these people, I understood, because this again, you need to inform yourself to gain more knowledge on what it is. So the majority of modern leather is top coated. So that clear coat, kind of like your paint, is polyurethane based typically. So yes, it's a transparent protective layer on top of your leather. Now we're not talking aniline or semi-aniline. We're talking the majority of your vinyls, your vegan leather, and the leather found in 99% of modern vehicles today. So that has a top coat. That top coat, when it's new, so from anywhere brand new all the way up to three years, when there's no micro fractures over time, the conditioner cannot actually penetrate that top barrier. Mm -hmm. Think of it like the clear coat. A conditioner will not penetrate to the leather hide underneath the polyurethane top coat so it's useless to use a conditioner because you're not penetrating that leather okay. where conditioners sometimes are used is on older worn leather where you have some micro cracking on the top surface so kind of see it like a desert right if you see that cracks in the desert floor so that over time well it seeps through and if you use a conditioner you can actually go and rehydrate the hide underneath but for new leather that's in good condition you do not use conditioners. What you use are leather sealants or leather coatings. And that's, yes, I absolutely believe in those because okay. what you're protecting against is friction damage because you're, you're going in and out of your seat. So you want to prevent wear and tear. You want to protect against the UV rays. So the weathering, the cracking, the fading, and the oxidizing of that top coat, just like your clear coat on your paint that you protect, right? You're also protecting against dye transfer. So it doesn't mean that you're not going to have uh, dye transfer from your jeans that you're wearing. It's going to mean that it's going to be easier to remove. Sometimes just with a damp towel with a bit of uh, distilled water, you wipe and your maintenance is going to be easier. So just like we'd apply a ceramic coating to make maintenance much easier and protect the clear coat, you apply a leather sealant. Typically those last two to three, maybe six months. Or now we have leather coatings. So those typically last 10 to 18 months on average. So uh, just like paint sealants and paint coatings, you you have leather sealants and you have leather coatings so definitely I see the benefits over the long run and also for the ease of maintenance having a protection on top of your um, leather that's top coated is very important and yes I do uh, I absolutely believe in those as long as you understand that conditioners there's a certain time and use for them but not on brand new leather that is in good condition so stick to cleaning your leather so prepping the surface and then apply a leather sealant or a leather coating if your leather is in good condition and then when it gets older faded or cracked or you're starting to kind of restore that uh, underlying material that's now exposed so the leather hide then you can dive into the conditioners and also do some protection on top good yeah. all right all right guys so thank you pan for coming here hey, my pleasure you for, you're thanks very for generous me. with your time and your advice in general so thanks for being on the channel and with that being said, guys, we'll see you in the next one.